<clears throat> yes, I'm live now. Welcome once again to another new video. This is Santu Sahu and you are watching Sahu's tutorial English literature. I heartily welcome once again to another new video. This is Santu Sahu. And uh, in this YouTube video here, I'll be covering the PYQs of SSB Odisha Lectorship. This is the first video, part one. And uh, in the upcoming days also, I'm hoping to make videos for the upcoming SSB Odisha Lectorship exam. I hope that you are all well by the grace of Almighty and you must be selling in the sea of life. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I think everything is okay. PPT is clearly visible to everyone. And I am also clearly audible to everyone. Please do let me know if everything is okay. I think everything is okay. Isn't it, Orko? I think everything is okay. Just a minute. Okay, let's begin the session. Without wasting your time, here is the first question on your screen. Please do answer. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, so here is the first question on your screen. Please do answer. The first folio of Shakespeare's play appeared in which year? First folio of Shakespeare. And you know that Shakespeare <clears throat> was born in the year 1564, died in 1616. So, after the death of Shakespeare, seven years of his Okay, 1623 is the right answer. After seven years of his death, the first folio of Shakespeare's plays published and some of the plays were also excluded from that uh, folio. It's a collection of plays. Some play, some of the plays are like Pericles, Pericles, the noble kinsman. These are the works. Okay, here you see the two noble kinsmen, Pericles, Prince of Tyres and Edward the Third. These are the works that were not included in that section. Okay, you must remember that the folio that was published in the year 1623, some of the uh, plays were not included. And these plays are one is the first Pericles, second one is the Prince of Tyre, third one is the two noble kinsmen, and the fourth one is the Edward the Third. And here you see published in 1623 after seven years after Shakespeare's death, and you must remember that these were actually uh, prepared by whom Shakespeare colleagues named John Hemmings and Henry Condell. Okay. <clears throat> John Hemmings and Henry Condell, they have prepared this folio. It was dedicated to whom? It was dedicated to the incomparable fair of brethren, William Herbert, third Earl of Pembroke and his brother, Philip Herbert, Earl of Montgomery. You should also no. Huh. Next question. The world, the words like all the world is a stage in Shakespeare as you like it. The romantic comedy, the romantic comedy are uttered by which of the character? Rosalind, Jax, Orlando, Oliver. <clears throat> the words all the world is a stage in Shakespeare as you like it. And here the entrance of the characters in the theater, in the stage is compared to the birth of a human being. And the exit of that character from that stage is compared with the death of human being. So all the world just stays and we are merely the actors. We are just playing roles. The famous line 
रोमांटिक कॉमेडी ऑफ शेक्सपियर दैट इज एज यू लाइक इट ओके जैक्स द मेलन कली as well as tart stone these two famous characters okay appeared in as you like it which is a romantic comedy all the world just stage is the phrase that begins a monologue from shakespeare's pastoral comedy it is also known as a pastoral comedy as you like it spoken by the melancholy jacks in which scene act 2 scene 7 okay act 2 scene 7 of that pastoral romantic comedy festy Here is Festy. Festy is a character in Shakespeare's Twelve Nights, The Tempest, The Winter Tales, The Taming of the Shrew. Festy is a famous character as well. And uh, this is actually the last work of Shakespeare. It is also known as the Swan Song. It is also known as the Swan Song. Now tell me, Festy appeared in Shakespeare's exactly or co? Excellent, it is Twelfth Night. Okay, Festy is a character that appeared in Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. Here, this is <clears throat> no, no, sorry, sorry. It is not the Tempest is the Swan Song actually. Okay, it's not Twelfth Night. Tempest is the Swan Song. Sorry, Tempest is the Swan Song, the last work. Whereas Twelfth Night is the. Uh, Twelve night, twelve night. Okay, we have the festy. Hmm. Exactly. Good. Good morning. Swan song is actually tempest. Sorry, twelve not twelve uh, night. नहीं है. Festy is a fictional character in William Shakespeare's comedy Twelve Night. He is a fool. He is a royal jester attached to the household of the Countess Olivia. Okay. To the household of the Countess Olivia. He has apparently been there for some time, and he was a fool that the Lady Olivia's father. took mass delight in lady olivia's father took mass delight in that character okay in marlowe's play what was the name of the jew of malta good morning okay so in marlowe's play what was the name of the jew of malta here lady lazarus solomon silac barabbas here in this work we find the conflicts uh, between uh, between the jews the christians and the turks okay the conflict between the jews versus jews Uh, then we have the Christians <coughs> and the Turks. Okay, these two, okay, the conflicts in Jews, Christian, and Turks. Here, excellent. It is hmm, excellent. It is Barabbas. Barabbas is the villain as well as the hero. The villain as well as the hero of Christopher Marlowe's Jew of Malta. Okay, only obsessed with money and power, and he was at the end of the uh, play. He will be punished. Okay, he will be punished. So here, Barabbas is the Jew of Malta. There is a conflict between the Jews, the Christians, and the Turks in that war. Here, Barabbas is the main character. Christopher Marlowe's the moving play called the famous tragedy. This is the full. Uh, this is the full name of the tragedy. The famous tragedy of the rich Jew of Malta is a tale of violent conflict between the Christians, the Jews, and the Turks. Okay, and its hero villain is the Barabbas, a wealthy Jew. Has a cruel but intoxicating desire for money and as well as for revenge, but is ultimately punished at the end of the uh, drama. The Shoemaker's Holiday. Shoemaker's Holiday is a work by. It's actually a city comedy. It's a city comedy. Okay. The Shoemaker's Holiday is a work by Thomas Dekker, Thomas Middleton, Thomas Kidd, Thomas Nash. Hmm. Excellent, excellent. It's actually Thomas Dekker. Hmm. Hmm. Thomas Dekker here. Thomas Dekker. He is also the or co at that point that he is also known as Elizabethan Dickens. Okay. At that point, along with that here that Elizabethan he is also known as Elizabethan Dickens. Okay. Elizabethan Dickens. Thomas Dekker. The Shoemaker's Holiday. And here the subtitle is Gentleman Craft. 
here see the gentle crap actually sorry it's dental crap the shoemaker's holiday and and the subtitle of this work is the gentle crap it's an elizabethan play written by thomas decker and it was a kind of sub genre of city comedy and here the thomas decker is known as thomas decker is known as elizabethan dickens okay he is known as elizabethan dickens clear okay it's a city comedy and gentle craft is the subtitle of shoemaker's holiday andrew marvels okay the 16th century the 16th century metaphysical poet okay pays his homage to the lord protector and a tribute to the royal dignity of charles the first charles the first you know was executed in the year 1649 charles the first was executed in 1649 okay you all know that he was executed in the year 1649 here andrew marvel pays his homage to the lord protector and a tribute to the royal dignity charles the first in which of these work the garden barmudas a horatian ode open upon cromwell's return from return from ireland and to his coy mistress here the andrew marvel 17th century 17th century metaphysical poet is actually paying homage to the lord protector here law who is the lord protector it is oliver cromwell it's oliver cromwell okay oliver cromwell is the lord protector you know uh, he was ruling during the period and interregnum period that is from 1649 to 1660 exactly pradeep and here arco as well from 1649 to 1660 this was the time span of oliver cromwell the period and interregnum period here on horace and ode and horace and ode upon cromwell's return that is the oliver cromwell the lord protector and the tribute also to royal dignity of charles the first was executed in the year 1649 you must remember as well so here c is the right answer excellent moving at to question number 7 i here about whom t s eliot thomas stan eliot wrote uh, that did write actually a thought to him was an experience we have also done earlier in the previous videos john dan andrew marvel harvard harvard richard crasher here you see these are all here these are all here metaphysical poets 17th century famous metaphysical metaphysical poets here here is question number 7 and today in the evening okay today in the evening orko pradeep and uh, gorod those who are watching i will be covering canadian literature okay for your homework is canadian literature okay your homework is canadian literature study a little bit about canadian literature we will be covering in the evening session okay canadian literature okay a mock test on canadian literature will be covered in the evening session okay that is your homework okay here uh, a thought to him was an experience is actually here uh, john dan excellent excellent here john dan a is the right answer moving on to question number 8 okay. which of the following works dr samuel johnson is an imitation okay dr samuel dr uh, which of the following works of dr johnson is an imitation of the 10th satire of juvenal okay russell's the vanity of human wishes london a dictionary of the english language here <clears throat> dr samuel johnson is an imitation of the 10th satire of juvenal and you all know that samuel johnson has written a novel called russellas as well okay russellas is a novel by samuel dr samuel johnson has written a novel that is russellas as well okay russellas and here the vanity of human wishes exactly it's vanity of human wishes orco orco excellent here the vanity of human wishes is the right answer okay so we have the following works of johnson is an imitation an imitation of the 10th chapter of juvenal 10th chapter of juvenal here the vanity of human wishes is the right answer so b is the these are all pyqs of ssb okay from odisha so the vanity of human wishes here the subtitle is you should remember that the 10th chapter of juvenal imitated the 10th chapter of juvenal imitated is a poem by the english author samuel johnson clear and it was published it was written in 1748 published in 1749 clear and it was begun and completed while johnson was busy writing in dictionary of the english language as well and it is an imitation as a subtitle is suggesting you see the subtitle of this the 10th satire of juvenal imitated so the subtitle is suggesting that okay it is an imitation of satire 10 by the latin poet juvenal okay but unlike juvenal johnson attempts to sympathize with this poetic subjects but unlike juvenal was okay uh, an attacker actually 
here unlike johnson unlike juvenal johnson attempts to sympathize with his poetic subjects which augustan writers epithet okay there is an epithet famous epithet reads like one who strove with all his might to champion liberty okay to champion liberty and i'm giving a clue he is a hater of human being he is a misanthropist okay he is a hater of human being okay this is the clue one who strove with all his might to champion liberty <clears throat> <coughs> exactly exactly orko fantastic is jonathan swift jonathan swift is actually a hater of mankind here jonathan swift an epithet uh, that the epithet right uh, like reads like one who strove with all his might, uh, might to champion liberty it's c is the right answer excellent orko moving on to question number 10 the third book of gulliver travels okay let us publish in the 1726 okay the third book of Gulliver's Travels was published in 1726. This is a satire. This is a satire uh, by, by Swift here, which is the third book of Gulliver's Travels. And you see that uh, Gulliver's Travels is having a total four books, okay, published in 1726. And uh, here you see that all these are actually, all these are actually in the proper order. The first one is the voyage to Lilliput. This is the first one. A voyage to Brooding Nang is the second one. Third one is the voyage to Laputa, which is actually excellent. Orko. Here C is the right answer. Voyage to Laputa. Laputa is a flying island. You should know that Laputa is actually a flying island. Hmm. Laputa is actually a flying island here. And a voyage to the country of Hunems is actually a horse in <coughs> Hunems. Okay, they are Hunems, they are horse like it's okay. So here this is the fourth one. Okay, so voyage to Laputa is actually the third book. Exactly. Here the part one voyage to Lilliput, second one is the voyage to Brooding Nag, the third one is the voyage to Laputa, Balni Barbi, Lagnak, Glabda Drip, and Japa. And the fourth one is actually a voyage to the land of Honames. These are the actually these are in the proper orders, published in 1726. Okay. The main idea of Alexander Pope's the Danciate, the famous work Danciate, was taken from John Dryden's Fridge work. Alexander Pope, Pope had written the poem called the Danciate. He was heavily influenced by the works of Dryden, okay, the master. The famous writer of the Restoration period. That's why Restoration period also known as Age of Dryden. Religious I see the Middle, the Hind, and the Panther and Max Fligno here. <clears throat> Do answer quickly. We'll be covering Canadian literature in the evening session. Study a little bit. This is your homework. <clears throat> exactly. Here, who is Mac Fligno? Who is Mac Fligno? Will you please tell me? Who is Mac Fligno? Dunciat. Pope's Dunciat was heavily influenced by the works of Dryden's Mac Fligno. Now, you tell me. Dryden's Dryden in Mac Fligno is criticizing whom? It is Thomas Sadwell. Okay. It is Thomas Sadwell. Okay, Thomas Sadwell was being criticized okay, by Dryden in the work Mac Fligno. Here D is the right answer. Okay, excellent. Okay. For the mock, for the mock heroic structure, dance is a mock heroic work. Dance itself, however, the idea seems to be have come clearly from Mac Fligno. Okay, Mac Fligno is a poem celebrating the apotheosis of Thomas Sadwell, whom Dryden nominates as the dullest poet of the age. Dryden is nominating, okay. Thomas Sadwell as the dullest poet of the age. And Sadwell is the spiritual son of Mac Fligno. Here, hmm, an obscure Irish poet of low fame, and he takes his place as the favorite of the goddess of dullness. Clear? The restoration period began in 1660. And with the restoration of what? You know that restoration of monarchy. Monarchy was restored here. Monarchy was restored here. And before that, before that actually that king uh, were actually uh, spending his lives spending his exile in france okay you know he was heavily influenced by the works by the by the dramas of french hmm, by the comedies of french writers that's why he had also okay, entertained during his period influenced as well <clears throat> yeah 
it charles the second restoration of the monarchy charles the second came from exactly charles the second who was in the france actually charles the second was in the france he was spending his lives he was spending his exile in france okay and he returned from that exile in the year 1660 so this is the restoration of monarchy Restor and after that restoration of monarchy it was also the drama also started to <coughs> and drama started uh, to open actually so king charles the second is the rider is right right answer here restoration restoration of the monarchy in england 1660 it marks the return of the charles the second that is uh, from 1660 to 1685 following the period of oliver cromwell's commonwealth here you see charles the second was reinstated in 1660 during his years of exile in france charles the second came to admire the french entertainments and theatrical styles he was heavily influenced by the theatrical styles of the french writers Okay, that's why okay he is also influenced okay and admired the writers of that period restoration period to write uh, plays to write comedies exactly it's b is the right answer okay which one of the following plays is not by william congre here william congre is a famous famous restoration playwright the famous restoration playwright william congre which is not by william congre double dealer plain dealer way of the world laugh for love Please do like the session. If you are liking the session, if you are enjoying the session, please do like the session and share your friends as well. Tap the bell icon to get more notification as well. And do join the Telegram channel that is Santu Sahu UGC Net to stay updated regarding the upcoming classes. And UGC Net JRF said get C U T P G classes are available. You can also call me. This number number is given here. Here is question number thirteen. Please do answer in the comment box. in the evening session there will be a session where i will be covering canadian literature and hoping to make also videos on paper one as well in the afternoon session <clears throat> here laugh for laugh Love for love is a work by William Congre. The way of the world is a love. The way of <clears throat> double dealer, the plain dealer. Have you answered all? Have you answered all? You are answering which question? Please do let me know. Have you answered, please? So here, double dealer, double dealer, the way of the world, love for love. These are all works by William Congreve. The other is the plain dealer. It's a work by William Wycherley. William Wycherley. Okay, William Wycherley has written thirteen B exactly like that. Okay, thirteen B. The plain dealer by William Wycherley. The plain dealer is a restoration comedy by William Wycherley, and it's first performed eleven December. The play is based on Molière's. Lee Misanthro and is generally considered Wycherley's finest work along the country. Why? Wycherley is famously known for exactly. Wycherley is famously known known for that is the country wife and the plain dealer. Whereas the double dealer is a work by William Congre. Who among the following is not a lake poet? Is he one? These are all PYQs of SSBs. Okay, I I think this is a paper from 2016 or 17 like that. Who among the following was not a lake poet here? and you tell me okay who called these romantic poets as pond poet along with that you should also know that romantic poets are romantic poets are known as romantic poets are known as pond poets who told this pond poets here it's g g byron exactly byron is not our lake poet what's up sadi coldridge who called romantic poets as pond poets do answer in the comment box oh lived me Oh, lived me as a wave, a leaf, a cloud. I fall upon the thorns of life. I bleed. These famous lines are from "O to the West Wind, Autumn, Grecian Urn, O to a Nightingale." Is it pond poets? No. Sadi.
yeah exactly orko these are lines from out to the west wind okay i fall upon the thorns of life i bleed these lines are from the famous lines from out to the west wind exactly exactly got it hmm. lyrical ballads the collection of poems by and you need the first it was published in 1798 then the edition 1798 first was published preface was added in 1800 and 1802 diction was added okay poetic diction was added okay 1798 lyrical ballads was published here 1800 it was the preface was added in 1802 a poetic diction was added in 1802 edition is you one quickly to answer do like the session as well so watson and coldridge here is you one lyrical ballads with a few other poems by watson and samuel taylor coldridge published in 1798 and the 1800 edition is famous for the preface to the lyrical ballads okay a second edition was published in 1800 in which watson included additional poems and a preface detailing the peers about poetical principles for another edition published in 1802 it was poetic diction poetic diction got it 1798 only lyrical ballads on lyrical ballads 1800 that is we have the preface to lyrical ballads preface to lyrical ballads and 1802 a poetic diction was added appendix he had added an appendix okay this is an appendix actually title as poetic diction poetic diction that was added in 1802 remember that okay poetic uh, the appendix poetic diction was added in 1802 in which play of ben johnson do we find the three rogues called thartel face and doll these are rogue characters these are rogue characters and due to the plague due to the plague the owner of the house okay has left the house and the, the owner of the house is actually true wit okay the true wit is actually the owner of the house due to plague in london he has for a certain time has left the house and it is one of the finest plot ever written by samuel taylor coleridge s t coleridge has said that it is one of the finest plot ever written it's alchemist okay exactly orko excellent pradeep to here this is alchemist okay ben johnson here ben johnson has written the alchemist okay where the characters like subtle face and doll they are they appeared here the owner of this house is actually true wit and an outbreak of plague in london forces a gentleman called labwit to flee temporarily to the country side he lives so that's why okay due to in the in the in the uh, in the uh, in the towns that is in the city of plague in city of london okay there is a plague outbreak of plague that's why okay the owner of that house labwit has gone has fled uh, has fled temporarily uh, to the country as well to the country and he leaves his house under the sole charge of his butler jeremy okay jeremy is the butler under the charge of jeremy and jeremy uses this opportunity to given him to see the house and the headquarters for fraudulent acts okay they started fraudulent acts he transforms himself into a captain face so it was jeremy who transformed himself into a captain face and enlist the aid the help of the satel a fellow conman doll a common doll common a prostitute okay and labuit is actually sorry it's not true wit sorry it's not true wit it's labuit i'm extremely sorry it's labuit okay it's not two wit it's labu it actually okay it's labu it prove it labu it labu it chalo philaster philaster is a work by tragic comedy historical play revenge tragedy narrative poem it's not true wit it's lab wit okay touch stone and jacks the melancholy appear in as you like it touch stone and you know matthew wandel has given the tarston method tarston is also a character in as you like it the pastoral romantic comedy here is question number 18 and this work was written in collaboration philaster was written in collaboration with uh, in collaboration with whom in collaboration with beaumont and fletcher okay philaster is a work that was written in collaboration with beaumont with beaumont and fletcher beaumont and fletcher they have collaboratively okay he has written this work philaster it's a tragic comedy it's a tragic comedy clear it's a tragic comedy philaster having the subtitle what love lies a bleeding 
Love Lies a Bleeding is an early Jacobian era stage play. It's a tragic comedy written by Beaumont and John Fletcher. So they have collaboratively written this word filaster, Love Lies a Bleeding. Remember that filaster is having a subtitle called Love Lies a Bleeding. One of the duo's earliest success actually. The play helped establish the trend of tragic comedy that was powerful influence in the early Stuart era drama, 1620 quarter text. That is filaster is a Love Lies a Bleeding is the having the subtitle like this one. Okay. Which English novel begins with the famous statement? It is very easy to uh, very easy to answer. Do answer very quickly. Okay. Pride and Prejudice. Okay, here uh, the first title is actually first impression. First impression was the first title. You should remember that. Okay. You should remember that Pride and Prejudice was first published as first impression. First impression was the first title by uh, first title of this work. Here 18. Uh, here is question number 19 on your screen. Do answer quickly. Okay, it's Pride and Prejudice. Okay, Pride and Pride and Prejudice first. Pride and Prejudice first. Uh, uh, title was First Impression. Okay, First Impression. Clear. <clears throat> Chalo. And here he's a C is a Regency period writer. Regency period writer. Oscar Wilde and C. So a tale. The subtitle of this work. A tale supposed to be written by himself belongs to which work of Oliver Kells Goldsmith. There is a work called. <clears throat> Sorry, a tale supposed to be written by himself. Supposed to be written by himself. Which works having the subtitle by Oliver Goldsmith? <clears throat> Please do like the session. Do like the session. Exactly, exactly. This Vicar of Wakefield, excellent. The Vicar of Wakefield is having the subtitle called A Tale Supposed to Be Written by Himself. A Tale Supposed to Be Written by Himself. The Vicar of Wakefield subtitle as A Tale Supposed to Be Written by Himself is a novel by the Anglo Irish writer Oliver Goldsmith. It was written in 1762 to 1761 to 2, published in 1766. Okay, next question. I think we have not added. Okay, I okay, will be ending the session here. I'll be ending the session here. We'll be covering later as well. Thank you once again for watching the video. And special mock test series are available for SSB exam. Special mock test series you can buy that is available also. Chalo. Special mock test series also available. You can buy for the upcoming SSB exam. I'll be coming with more details in the upcoming videos. I'll be coming with more details in the upcoming videos. And today in the evening, we'll be covering Canadian literature. Okay, we'll be covering Canadian literature. Study a little bit. Okay, I'll be ending the session here. Thank you once again. Gorod, Orko, Gorod, and here uh, that is Pradeep and everyone, those who are watching. Thank you. <clears throat>